comic reviews, right? So here's this week's comic reviews. We're starting with Invincible. This is uh, issue 66 of Invincible. This is interesting because we just got done with the Conquest storyline. And the Conquest storyline was part of the aftermath of the the Invincible War, which happened in issue 60. So it was Invincible War Aftermath. And now um, this one is Preparations for War, part one of two. And it's a Viltrumite War prelude. So now we're leading up to the Viltrumite War. This issue was really cool. Invincible's actually not in at all. It mostly focuses on his father, Nolan, a Viltrum, also known as Omni-Man. And we find out why there are so few purebred Viltrumites left in the world and why Earth is so important to their plans. It's going to become a breeding ground. And we see that there was a virus that wiped out most of the Viltrumite population. This is one part that I thought was really cool is that it's got this you know, it shows the planet Viltrum, and for the first time we're seeing it with a ring around it. And if you know rings on planets, they're, ac- they're actually usually made from little tiny, you know, asteroids, like rocks and shit. And you can, either, you can see here they're made from the bodies of dead Viltrumites. Pretty fucking grisly. Um, also prominent in this is Alan the Alien. You get to see his girlfriend again. She's always very funny. You know, I just she's always looking for sex, and he's, like, always very... Um, very reluctant to have sex with her because of his upbringing um, and how the Enopians are. And I just I just love the way she says, you know, here, here it is. I don't care how late you get back from your mission. You know the rules. You wake me up. I've been living without for months and I am hungry. Now give it to me, you Enopian god. Give it to me now. Damn, she's horny. Um, and then there's this part where she sees Nolan and she... You know, she just reacts. She sees a Viltrumite, and she blasts him with this gun, and all this is blasts his clothes off, and everybody's just... I mean, this is like the funniest panel in the history of this particular series. I mean, you got Alan the Alien on the couch with his girlfriend straddling him, holding a gun, and Nolan's standing there with his naked ass hanging out, and he's just like, we should probably be going. Man. I just I just think this is hilarious. Um, there's a couple of cute little jokes, but it is a pretty serious... Um, subject matter and we get into a little bit about nolan's books and how that factors into it and of course a nice cliffhanger ending so hopefully we'll be seeing the next issue of this soon invincible's been really good lately i mean issue 60 i thought sucked but 61 through 65 were all excellent and this one's also excellent here we have batgirl number two um i mainly picked this up because batgirl number one while it was an amazing did intrigue me with the way it ended, so I wanted to see what would happen. This issue, really boring. I was shocked. Um, it's mostly the old Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, who is now um, Oracle, just lecturing the new Batgirl, who is, you know, Stephanie Brown. And I just, yeah, I didn't tell you that in the review last month, but you should be know by now. I just was very bored reading through all this. I might give it one shot and pick up issue three. I don't know, I'd probably pick it up and, like, flip through it real quick in the comic store and see if it's worth buying. But for now, this one just really didn't do it for me. Up next is Blackest Night Superman number two, which I don't know why, but for some reason I wound up getting two copies of it in my bag, and I really don't know why. Here you see Supergirl with her father, the Black Lantern, kind of looming over her, although that's a very small part of the actual issue. Um, it continues the battle between the Superman of Earth 2, who's a Black Lantern, and the current Superman and Superboy. And then the Psycho Pirate shows up. Remember, he was killed by uh, Black Adam during uh, World War III? Was No, it was in, um, he was killed by him during Infinite Crisis, and he just makes everybody's emotions go crazy. Pretty great scenes. I mean, I just love the way everything's handled in this. Uh, so far, this has been my favorite Blackest Night tie-in. So, definitely recommend it if you're a Superman fan, or if you're into the whole Blackest Night thing, I would de- definitely recommend checking this out. I don't know why I got two copies, I guess I'll probably take one of them back next week and say, uh, hey, I don't know why you put two in my bag, but there you go. Uh, here's Superman's Secret Origin number one. Um, Jeff John's turning his big talent towards reinventing characters, now he's turning it on Superman. One thing that I thought was interesting is, um... As this begins, Superman, or rather Clark Kent, is already a teenager. He's in high school, and he knows about his powers, although he's still discovering just how powerful he is. Um, While playing football with Pete Ross, he breaks his arm, which, you know, gets him kind of yelled at by his father. But um, as you can see, Pete Ross has no complaints about his arm being broken due to all the attention he gets from girls. 
Uh, Clark is pretty upset about his powers and that he hurt somebody that is a friend. Then you have um, Lana, who's trying to calm him down. She kisses him, and his heat vision goes off, which I thought was a nice touch. He hasn't learned to control that yet. And uh, we briefly get to meet... Well, actually, before that, we get um, his parents showing him the rocket ship. And when he touches it, we get to see Jor-El and Lara R. And uh, Clark's reaction to finding out that he's not of this planet is pretty interesting. He actually he gets angry... He gets upset, and it's kind of like a normal reaction that, you know, a normal boy, it's like kind of like finding out you're adopted. So I like that, that they made him, you know, get angry, and he kind of flew off in a rage and ran outside, and his father had to calm him down. We briefly get to meet the young Lex Luthor, who is, um, he's obviously being abused by his father. Um, you get a brief glimpse of his sister. I don't know if she'll be a, any kind of major character or not, and he discovers the kryptonite. And uh, I thought this part was cute. Uh, Martha Kent, she touches the uh, rocket ship and she sees a little bit more of life on Krypton. You get to see Doomsday, you get to see uh, General Zod, and you get to see Brainiac. And um, she's just, she gets so into the Kryptonian um, formal wear, and that's how she makes Clark's first costume. And here we have the first meeting of Clark and Lex Luthor. Which uh, is kind of interesting. I mean, we saw this in the preview. And then a tornado hits, and Clark finds out he can fly, which is pretty cool. He saves... Oh, he has the glasses, too, that are made from his uh, the crystals in his ship, so it can stop his heat vision, which helps when Lana kisses him again here. Uh, which is interesting, because he didn't like the glasses at all at first. And then this, when you first see the Superman costume, or I guess you should say the Superboy costume, I love... Jonathan Kent's reaction, like, uh, it's a bit tight, don't you think? And he's very embarrassed to wear it. Next issue promises that we'll see the Legion of Superheroes. I really enjoy this. Like, the whole thing was just really fun. So, if you're any kind of Superman fan, you should definitely check that out. Last, we have Deadpool Merc with the Mouth, number three. Um, you know, the, uh, the cover kind of referencing, like, I think it's Night of the Living Dead. Or maybe it was Dawn of the... I think it's Dawn of the Dead, actually. Um, this one, I, I was a little bit disappointed. The humor was just kind of not there. The action was just kind of blah. The first two issues were really good, but this one kind of uh, dipped a bit. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe in the context of the whole thing it'll be better. But I was kind of disappointed. The artwork, very clustered. I mean, I, I like I like on this page where the Deadpool, said, says, the Deadpool head says, so where's Waldo? And it kind of is the kind of really cluttered look. Um, yeah, this one was kind of mediocre. So, uh, that's the comics this week. The worst one was probably Batgirl. The best one, Superman's Secret Origin. See you guys next week with more comic reviews.